Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperroll in an episode I'd like to call Story Lord. And this is a continuation of the Dumb Luck series and starts with a wandering trainer that came with Dragon Lord and Story Weaver, thus the Story Lord. Now, what is good about those is that those particular traits don't impact the champions they're on, but affect the team as a whole. So if you end up with a trainer like this, you're probably in pretty good shape. But let's look at the first set of augments. Cut above is a possibility because we could put it on Sivir, but Magic Wand will actually be better because we're going to want to bring in Diana as one of the carries later on. Normally, I don't like going Dragon Lord unless I start with a Diana, but since it's on the Wandering Trainer, we know we're going to work towards it later. Further, one of our story weavers is a sage, and Diana is Dragon Lord and Sage, so it synergizes very well together. Story Weaver is often strong early because you get an additional player who is going to help buff the champs that are next to it. In this case, I'm using the speed buff because uh, later on I think it'll be helpful. We got gifted with an early Diana and gave her a Hextech Gunblade, which is one of my favorite items for her, along with the Titan's Resolve and Jeweled Gauntlet. I've seen a lot of other things of people doing online, but this is what seems to work best for me. It's time for an item choice, and I was hoping for either a bow or a needlessly large rod so I could get more Diana items, but uh, that's not there. So we're going to grab the tier because it will be useful later on with some of the champs we're going to get. And thanks to having Story Weaver and even just the first level of Dragon Lord, we are going to continue to rampage through teams. It's just hard to get away from what that combination can do, especially early. It's time for the second set of augments and Triforce immediately jumps out since I plan on having a three cost as one of our main carries. Look at everything else, nothing super exciting, so we'll stick with Triforce and the hope is to make Diana supremely powerful. And we'll hyperspeed through some of these fights. Uh, trainers like that always just get me because Mythic is great, but it's not going to end up pairing with anything else on it really in a way, so they're in a little bit of trouble. We added in Ribbon as our next Story Weaver, and we have Lee Sin on the bench for the fourth Dragon Lord. We also decided to go with Force as our next Augment to Kale, just because once we hit the four Dragon Lord, it's going to include a stun, and that Force will help us keep winning. After a waste of time, we got a two-star Diana and a Masterwork upgrade. We're going to go ahead and get the Hextech Life Blade instead of the Hextech Gunblade, just so she can do a little bit more healing, keep herself up a little bit longer. We run into someone else with Story Lord abilities, but they have not created the Kale. I don't know whether they just didn't get lucky and find those champs, or if they didn't see the synergy, but uh, yeah, that's the result. Heading into the final set of augments, the game's like, hey, dragon dude, do you want another dragon? Yeah, don't need it because adding an extra is not going to help. Well fed, we're not running enough bruisers. Healing orbs becomes the natural choice. Why not take the dragon crest? It's because once you get to five, you're done. The ability itself does not give you anything special for the champ. It's a team-wide trait. So having additional dragon lords is not helpful for your team. Unlike something like Mystic, where you can go over because the champion is still getting the benefit. And we've now reached four Dragon Lords, which is a pretty nasty power spike, and that is because the Dragon's Breath will now come with a one and a half second stun on the opposing team, which is going to allow our team to take real advantage of it. Diana now has the Titan's Resolve, so she's going to get more hits in, get stronger, and yeah, just clean house. And this is the final individual component choice. Normally it would be Tear the Goddess for blue buff, but I really want to make a Morella Namicon on Morgana. So we go ahead and get the rod, and then we'll just go with Spear of Sojin for our mana producing item and hope to get some sort of amplifier a little bit later. And this player got Dr. Eper served up to them on a silver platter as they had both Dryad and Reaper. Now, Reaper on a trainer kind of sucks because it only impacts what it's on. Dryad, on the other hand, is good even with the additional emblem they picked up because it's going to impact, again, the individual champion. Time for an item choice, and out of this group, I don't have the Morgana item I was looking for, so I'm going to grab the Static Shiv, so I'm reducing the magic resist of the opposing team, and it will go on Sivir. Now, this trainer that we are against is pretty nasty for late game with Sage, 
Altruist, and Porcelain, because Sage is a very strong late game trait with Morgana and Wukong, so you can see they're having success in this part of the match. And we are now kind of all set for this game. We've got Rakan and Wukong, who were the last two champs we needed. Rakan, I'll pick up any AP item for, because Rakan does really, really well with AP. And as you can see, once you get to this level with Dragonlord, it, it kind of becomes hard to lose, especially with Sage on top of it, because you're getting the additional healing from Sage. So your team stays up longer, and with them being stunned, you're just going to start knocking things out. Item-wise right now, it's about Rakan and Wukong. I want to get as much AP on Rakan as possible, so we're going to go ahead and grab the Nashter's Tooth. And we end up against the ghost team of the other Story Lord team who has now embraced their Story Lordness by bringing in Kale. Luckily, it's the ghost team, so we're going to be able to get through it. But it's a little close for comfort given that it's a ghost team. But with that victory, and say it with me, we are now into the top four. And it is time for our final two items, and I want to grab the Adaptive Helm from Morgana, just so she has that little bit more power and even a little extra mana regeneration. And this is now the complete team with the five Dragonlord and the four Sage. For our final item, want something for Wukong, decide, you know what, just go with the Thieves' Gloves and I'll take the two random items. At this point, I'm not really too concerned about how this is going to turn out. It's really a question in my mind, since we're at 16 and no one's even close, of just how many rounds it's going to take. And as I've been kind of hinting all of this week, this is my gripe with this season, and in particular, Wandering Trainer. From the moment that trainer popped in, I knew exactly what I needed to do and how powerful this team would be once it was complete. I also had such an easy jump on everyone else being able to get an early Kale, that it made Endgame ultimately not that difficult to get through. And with Rakan and Wukong at the end, they just clean up and it's GG for everyone. So yeah, there you go. This was Dumb Luck Week. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.